Chapter 6.4 Application Problems in Two Variables. Okay, this is okay. This section is a word problem. So using the word problem, we will set up a, set up a system of two linear equations with two variables. Okay, first of all, rate of wind and the rate of current problems. Okay, rate of wind means okay, rate means speed. Okay, speed of the wind and rate of current means rate the speed of the current. You know the the river. So something like this. You know these two. You know, wind and current depends on, you know, if, if you are flying, if you're flying with the wind, then your, the airplane speed is actually faster. So the, the speed of airplane in still air means, you know, in still air means, you know, the, the wind is not blowing. So this, that is the original speed of the plane. But if you go, if there's a wind blowing, then you can fly with the wind. So the wind speed will, uh, will be added to the, airplane's speed. So in this case, let's say the airplane is going airplane is going this way. Let's say this is an airplane. Airplane is going this way. Does it look like airplane? Okay, airplane is going this way. Let's say the airplane speed is okay, the plane's speed. Let's say plane speed is 700 miles per hour. And wind is blowing Blowing same direction, so this is the wind, you know, the wind speed, wind speed. Let's say the wind speed is uh, 20 miles per hour. So what is the speed from a from going? You know, let's say you are going from location A to location B. You are going to the right, see from A to B, okay, from A to B. Then what is the total speed? What's the total speed? Because the total speed is the sum of the airplane's speed and the speed of the wind, isn't it? So P plus W will be the total speed. So 700 plus 20. So which is 720 miles per hour will be the actual plane's speed. Because you are going with the wind you know, airplane is flying with the wind, then we will add up two speeds, plane's actual speed and plane's, you know, speed in still air and the wind speed together. So that will be the total speed. So if we go against the wind, what happens? Against the wind. So you're, this time, here it is location A and this location B. So when you return, the airplane, airplane is coming this way. Airplane is coming this way, right? Okay. An airplane, just an airplane. This is airplane, right? And the wind is blowing this way. This is wind blowing. Wind is blowing against. So you are. So the airplane is flying against the wind. So actually, the wind is reducing the speed of the plane, right? Reduce the speed of plane. So when you go against the wind, then what will be the total speed? Total speed of the plane. Total speed. So the total speed will be, you know, you have an airplane speed, right? So the wind is reducing, you know, wind is blocking the speed. So the speed of the plane will be, uh, at the actual speed will be a subtraction. So you subtract the wind speed from the plane speed. So it will be 700 miles per hour minus the wind speed is 20. So it will be 680 miles per hour. Make sense? So if you go with the wind, then the total speed will be the sum of airplane and the wind. If you go against the wind, then the total speed will be the difference between the plane and the wind. Okay, it works same as the current. You know, when you go down the river, then you are going with the current. So you add, add up the, you know, the boat speed and the current speed. If you go against the water, against the water, then you have to subtract the water speed, the current speed from your boat speed. Make sense? All right, then based on this information, let's try example one. Okay, a 600 mile trip from one city to another another city. So let's say here's city A. 
here's the CDB. So you are going, let's say you are going to CDB. So this is the distance is 600 miles. All right. And the speed, it takes, okay, I don't know the total speed, but let's say here is the plane speed, P. P is the plane speed. And let's say W is the wind speed. W is the wind speed. So since you are going with the wind, the total speed will be P plus W. And the hour, it took, okay, when you go from city A to B, it took four hours. Right, four hours. The time. The time is four hours. So time one, time one is, you know, four hours from location A to B. Okay, so when you return, okay, when you return, this is the plane speed, and the wind is blowing this way, the wind is blowing this way, right? Then the total speed will be P minus W. So the total will be the speed, okay, speed. let's say the speed, speed uh, return, B to A, right? Speed B to A is what? Plane speed minus wind speed. Make sense? And then the time from city B to A is, it took five hours. So five hours, five hours. All right, so when you go from city A to B, from city A to B, so the speed, what's the total speed? What's the total speed from A to B? The airplane is flying with the wind, so it will be P plus W, right? P plus W. P plus W, and the time is four hours, and the distance is, okay, this is the distance, distance is 600 miles. Okay, when you return, when you return, the speed is P minus W, time is five hours, and then the distance 600 miles. So using this, uh, we will set up two equations. So one, one equation comes from, comes from, you're flying from city A to B, and the other equation comes from when you return from city B to A. So do you remember the formula DST? DST, right? Do you remember this formula? So this formula implies that the distance is equal to speed times T, right? Speed times T. Or, or the speed is distance over time, or the time is distance of speed, right? So, let's set up, on, set up two equations. And I, we will use this one. Okay, the distance is 600 miles. 600 miles, so the total distance. So from the distance is equal to, distance is speed times the number of hours. That's the formula, right? So when you go from city A to B, then what is the equation? City A to B. The distance is 600 miles. Then this 600 miles is the speed times the number of hours. So what's the speed when you go from A to B? The speed is the sum. Speed is the sum of airplane and the wind. So this speed times, how many hours did it take? Four hours. So we have one equation from, you know, going from A to B. And we can have the second equation when you return. So when you return, the total distance is 600 miles, same as, you know, same distance, right? Same distance. Then the total speed is what? You are going against the wind. So P minus W will be the actual speed. How many hours did it take? Five hours. Right? So we have two equations. So using the information above, information, we will use the distance formula, which is distance is equal to speed times time. So from this one, we have two equations, right? Two equations. All right, then let's find P and W. So why don't we... Okay, let's simplify each equation. So this is 600 is equal to, you know, distribute. So 4P plus 4W. And the second equation is 600 equals 5P minus 5W. Okay. 
So from this one, okay, let's get rid of W or 5. W or P doesn't matter, right? W doesn't matter. So let's say this is equation 3, equation 4. Then let's eliminate. Okay, now eliminate W. Let's eliminate W. So this is positive 4, negative 4. Then what's the LCD? LCD is 20, right? 20. So let's make 20. So make the coefficient of, so let's make this one 20. And let's make this one negative 20, right? Negative 20. So first of all, we got to multiply the third equation by uh, 5, by 5, so that we can make it 20. And then multiply the fourth equation by what? By 4. So that we can make it negative 20. All right. So multiply the third equation. Okay, let me write the third equation. So multiply this third equation by. Okay, okay write the third and the fourth equation. So that we can multiply each equation by this one by 5, right? And this one by 5. And then. Multiply the second equation by 4, so we multiply the right side by 4. Okay, and then that will be 3000 is equal to 20p plus 20w. And then 2400 is equal to 20p minus 20w. Okay, so we got this. So let's say this is equation 5 and 4. It doesn't matter, 5 and 4. So from this, so the coefficient of w is 20 and negative 20, so we can just add up so that we can eliminate w. So when we add these two, it will be, then this is equal to uh, 100 then 300, 135, right? 135. Okay, so the speed of the plane is 135 miles per hour. So we found the plane of the speed. So from this one, let's find wind speed. Okay, wind speed, you can use any equation. So why don't we use equation uh, equation 1. Okay, let's use equation 1. So from the equation 1, so 1 is, okay, 1 is 600 is equal to P plus W, 4. 600 is equals, equals P plus W times 4. So why don't we plug in 135 for P. So 600 is equal to 135 plus W times 4. And then 600 is equal to, multiply this by 4. So 640 plus 4W, right? Okay, so then okay, let, me, let me double check on this one. Okay, so this is 540, right? So minus 540 each side so that we can find 4y. Then this is 6, 60 is equal to 4w. 4 4w, 4 so divide each side by 4, then 60 over 4 is equal to w. So w, finally w is equal to 12, uh, 1 and 5. So the wind speed is 15 miles per hour. Okay, so we have found two, uh, two speeds, plane speed and the wind speed. So the most important thing is what? Use the you know, distance formula. Distance is speed times t. And then the total speed going with the wind is sum of two speeds. Going against the wind is difference of two speeds. So we have two equations. All right, so another approach of solving this is, okay, let's try from this one. 
uh, from this another approach if you see this if you see the equation of one and two carefully one and two carefully then 600 dv is divisible by four and 600 is divisible by five so why don't we just divide this one divide the first equation by four and divide the second equation by five so that we can just get rid of this four and five all right then Okay, 600 divided by 5, divided by 4 is 150, right, 150, so P plus W. And then 600 divided by 5 is 120, is equal to P minus W, right? So from this, why don't we just, okay, we are, we are doing another approach, because, you know, 600 is divisible by 4 and 5, we don't have to distribute P W right P plus W P minus W, so from here we can just add up two equations. Let's say this is equation three, equation four. Add up these two, then we have two hundred seventy is equal to two P right two P, and then divide each side by two, right two, then finally one thirty five. So the plane speed is one thirty five miles per hour, right? So, we can find W from equation 3 or 4. So, let's use equation 3. From the equation 3, 150 is equal to P plus W. So, why don't we just plug in this value, P value. So, 150 is equal to 135 plus W. And then minus 135 each side. Then this is 15 is equal to W. So, finally, the wind speed is 15 miles per hour right so we found these two values much simpler this is much simpler sim, uh, sim, simple method so you can do this one or this way so you may distribute four and five and then do all the calculations this one takes time and longer right but if you see you know one more time we can get rid of four and five by dividing the equation so we don't have no fractions and the values are very simple. Okay, let's try problem number one. Okay, problem one is this. Uh, a boat, a boat is, uh, is going from location A to B with the, with the current. So let's say the current is going from left to right, current, and the speed of the current, let's say the C is the speed of the current, and the canoe, the speed of, actually this is canoe, right? So the speed of the canoe, let's say it's a B, a boat, let's say a boat. So the speed of the boat is B. So when you go with the current, then the total speed will be the boat speed and sum of the boat speed and the current speed, right? And how long did it take when you go from left to right? So the time from A to B is, it says it took three hours, three hours. Okay, so when you come back, you know, when you come back, when you come back, the speed, the speed from B to A. So you are going against the current. So going against the current, so your speed, the boat speed will be reduced by C, right? So B minus the current speed and the time. And when you come, when you return against the current, so starting from B to C, B to A, the time is, it took four hours. It took four hours when you return from, uh, from location B to A. So using the, def using the distance formula, distance is equal to speed times T, right? So using this one, we can write two equations. So what are those two equations? Okay, the first equation is, the distance, the total distance from A to B is 24 miles. So 24 miles is equal to speed times the number of hours. So the total speed when you go from A to B, you are going with the water. So the total speed will be the boat speed plus the current speed. How long did it take? Three hours. So when you return, the total distance is 24 hours, uh, 24 miles, same as you know when you go uh, from A to B. So and the, when you return, the speed is reduced by the speed of the current, so B minus C. 
you are going against, yeah? you are paddling against the water. How long did it take? Four hours. So we have this equation, you know, very important equation, right? Very important equation. So the first equation comes from what? From A to B. And then the second equation comes from B to A. All right, then since since 24 is both divisible by 3 and 4, why don't we just divide? So divide the first equation. Okay, let's divide the first equation by 3. And then divide the second equation by, uh, by 4. And instead of using the distribution, we will just divide by 3 and 4. Okay, so let's divide 24 b plus 3 times 3. Okay, let me write the equation so that we can actually divide each side. So, the first equation will be divided by 3. Divide by 3. The second equation will be divided by 4, right? So that we can cancel out. So we have a new system of equations. New system of equations. A is equal to B plus 3. And the second equation becomes 6 is equal to B minus C. Oh, wait a minute, this is C, mm, sorry, this got to be C, right? B plus C, B minus C. Okay, so we have new system of equation. Let's say this is equation 3 and this is equation 4. So equation 3 comes from equation 1 by dividing the equation by 3. And equation 4 comes from equation 2 by dividing it by what? 4, right? All right, then from this, as you can see this, the coefficient of c is positive 1 and negative 1. So c and minus 1. So we can just add up these two so that we can eliminate the variable c. So when, once we add it, okay, 8, plus four, uh, 8 plus 6 is 14 is equal to 2b. Two and then cancel out c. So from here, divide each side by 2. Then 7 equals b. So, what is the speed of the boat? It's 7 miles per hour, isn't it? 7 miles per hour. Okay. Then let's find the speed of the current. So let's use either equation 3 or 4. Okay, I, don't want to use, I don't want to use equation 1 and 2 because, you know, we have to distribute this more work. So we will use equation 3 or 4, which is equivalent to equation 1 and 2. So let's use equation 3. Okay. All right. So from equation three. So equation three is a is equal to b plus four b plus c. So why don't we plug in seven? So eight is equal to seven plus c, and then minus seven each side. So one equals c. So the speed of the current is one mile per hour. Got it. All right, then let's try a different example, different examples. Okay, example two. Uh, a store owner purchased 20 incandescent uh, light bulbs and 30 fluorescent bulbs for total of total cost of $40. So the first purchase, okay, the total cost of the first purchase is $40. Okay, $40 is the total price, right, total price. And then this $40, is used to purchase 20 incandes incandescent, incandescent uh, light bulbs and then 30 fluorescent bulbs. So the number of incandescent light bulb, light bulb is 20, right, 20, and 30 fluorescent. So, and, the, and the, he made another purchase, second purchase, and the price of the incandescent and the fluorescent is the same. So the second purchase, he spent $20. He spent $20 by purchasing 30 uh, incandescent light bulbs and 10 fluorescent. 
All right, then we want to find the cost of each incandesc incandescent light bulb. So let's say incandescent light bulb. The cost of incandescent light bulb is I. Okay, I is the price of this one. And then also the cost of fluorescent light bulb is F. All right, so the total cost. So from the first purchase, we can write, we can write two equations. And the first equation comes from the first purchase, and the second equation comes from the second, uh, second purchase. So from the first purchase, uh, the total cost, what is the total cost? The total cost. Is the total cost, is the sum of, is the price, is the sum of the cost from incandescent and the fluorescent, right? So for the incandescent, there are 20, incandescent light bulbs so multiply this 20 times i right i i is the price of incandescent so i times 20 plus fluorescent how, i don't know how much the uh, fl each flor fluorescent light bulb is so fluorescent times how many did it purchase 30 of them right 30 of them so the total cost should be 20i plus 30f right and then for the second purchase, the total cost for the second cost, the uh, second price, uh, second purchase is he bought thirty incandescent light bulbs, thirty incandescent light bulbs, and then what? How many fluorescent? Ten fluorescent light bulbs. So we got the first equation from the first purchase, and the second equation from the second equation. Uh, the, from the first, uh, second purchase, we can write the second equation. So let's write the total cost. Total cost for the first purchase that is forty dollars, right? This is forty dollars, and the second purchase he spent twenty dollars, right? Twenty dollars. Okay, so let's rewrite the equation. So from the first purchase, the total total cost was forty dollars, and he bought twenty incandescent and thirty fluorescent. From the second purchase, he spent twenty dollars by purchasing thirty incandescent and ten fluorescent. So from these two equations, let's solve for i and f. All right, so which is better? So should we eliminate F or I? Uh, why don't we eliminate F? Because we can just multiply the second equation by negative 3. So we want to make, uh, this is 30 and 10, so LCM. LCM is equal to 30, right? 30. So already the first equation is 30. So let's make the second equation negative 30. Okay, so let's make the uh, let's make the second equation what? by negative 30, so multiply by negative 3. So I will multiply the second equation. Okay, write the second equation. And then let's multiply this by negative 3. Multiply this by negative 3. All right, then negative 60 is equal to uh, negative... 90i minus 30f. So this is equation th equation three, right? So equation three comes from equation two. So let's rewrite the equa two equations. Equation one, get this equation one and equation three. So one is unchanged. And then we just rewrote the second equation. Right, the second equation is negative 60 is equal to negative 90i minus 30f. So this is equation 1 and equation 3. So equation 3 comes from equation 2. Alright, so why don't we just add up these two so that we can eliminate this 30 and negative 30 in f. So add it, then negative 20 is equal to negative 70i. All right, so from this, let's find i. So divide each side by negative 70. 
uh, did I make any uh, mistakes here? Okay, let me let me double check. All right, you know I copied the answer incorrectly. So actually, okay, the second purchase, the total cost of the second purchase, not twenty five, not twenty dollars. This should be twenty five dollars. Sorry about this one. So this is twenty five dollars, not twenty. Twenty five dollars. Okay, twenty five dollars. So we have to change this one into twenty five dollars. Okay, so twenty five. This should be twenty five, right? Twenty five. This is all wrong. Okay. So this is twenty five dollars. The second purchase is twenty five dollars. So multiply twenty five by three is negative seventy five, right? So negative seventy five. Then this is negative 35. All right, then divide each side by negative 70. So that is the cost of incandescent. So this is 0.5, right? Isn't it positive 0.5? No, one half, right? One half. So the price of each incandescent prop of light bulb is 50 cents, 0.5 dollars, right? Okay, we found I. All right, then let's use uh, use equation. Okay, let's use equation two. Okay, equation two. So from equation two. Okay, what's the equation two? Okay, twenty five is equal to thirty and ten. So twenty five dollars is equal to thirty i plus ten f. And the winner the value of i, right? So plug in plug 0.5. So 30 times 0.5 plus 10f. This is 25 equals 15. And a 0.5 is one half, right? One half. So divide 30 by 2. And minus 15 each side. So that this is 10 is equal to 10f. And di and divide each side by 10. So F equals one. So each fluorescent is what? One dollar, right? One dollar each. Okay, we are done. Well, we have a problem number two. So, okay, let's try problem number two. Okay, problem two. On Tuesday, you go into a copy center and you make 85 black and white copies. Okay, 85 black and white copies. And you made also 25 color copies for a total cost of 1420. So you made the first copy, make a first copies, and the, the total cost is $14.20. So you made 85 black and white copies and 25 color copies. Okay, on Wednesday, okay, your colleague goes to the same copy center and makes this time 75 black and white copies and five color copies for the total cost of six dollars and ninety cents okay so so there are two you know two different days they made you know two different you know copies and th there are two different you know total costs all right so we want to find the cost per copy for black and white then what is so let's say black and white let's say b is the price of each copy for black and white okay this b is the cost cost per copy for black and white and let's say c uh, the color copy let's say c is the color copy okay cost for a color copy so let's say c is the cost for color copy all right, so based on this information, we can write two equations. Okay, the first equation is from the first purchase, same thing, for first copy. So he spent $14, the, you know, the total speed. So the total cost, the total, the total cost is what? The cost from making, you know, black and white copies and the the cost for color copies so this is the okay, price the cost 
the total cost is the let me write it here cost for black and white cost for black cost for making black and white black and white plus the cost from for color copies right color copies right color copies so from this from this the first equation is okay the, the total cost is the first for the, for the first copies the total cost is 14.2 dollars and he made 85 black and white copies so multiply 85 by the cost per each black and white copy and also he made color copies how many 25 color copies so 25 times c so that's the first equation and the second equation is the total cost is six dollars and ninety cents so this cost includes 75 black and white so 75 b plus how many color copies five of them all right so we made two equations right equation one equation two All right, then from this one, let's, uh, from this, we want to find the cost per copy for black and white. We don't have to find C. We just want to find B. So this time, eliminate. We will eliminate, eliminate C to find B. Right? We want to find B, right? We want to find B. So eliminate C. So since the coefficient of C is 5, 25 and 5, we will make this one negative 25. Let's make it 25. So we got to multiply the second equation by negative 5. Okay. So multiply 6.9. 6.9 is equal to 75B plus 5C. So let's multiply this by negative 5. Okay. And then we will replace the second equation with this one. Okay, use a little calculator, then this will be 6.95 times 5 is negative 34.5, right? All right, and then the right side is 75 times negative 5 is negative 375B minus 25c all right so this is the third equation so we got the third equation from second equation so let's rewrite these two equations so the first equation is 14.2 is equal to 85b plus 25c so that so this is the equation one and equation two will be replaced by this third equation which is negative 34.5 is equal to negative 375b minus 25c so this is the third equation so second equation is written replaced with this third one and then what do we do next we want to get rid of this variable c right because this is 25 and minus 25 so we can just add two equations so that we can get rid of c Okay, 14.2 minus 34.5 is 20.3. So negative 20.3. And this one is negative uh, 290B, right? 290B. Okay, and then divide each side by... Divide each side by negative 290. Okay, then use a calculator, then this will give us the value 0 0.07 is equal to B. So, the price of each black and white copy is 7 cents, right? 7 cents. All right, done. So, whenever this, this section is hard because this is a word problem. 
So once we solve a word problem, okay, this is related to the system of linear equations. So we must have you know, at least two equations with two variables. So two equations, so read the questions carefully, and then set up two equations. So once you set up two equations, solve for you know, those two unknown variables. Okay, so once you set up an equation, so this is a you know, price question, you know, cost question. So total cost is what? You know, the number of, number of item A times the cost per each item, right? So using those information, write two equations. And then use elimination or substitution method to eliminate only one of those variables. And then solve for you know, these two variables. Okay, done for this section.